I'm Virkor, and this is part 22 of Call of Cthulhu. It put me back by about 20 feet, so I now have what I think is one bullet, which I'm going to try not to use. Let's just run. Okay. Yes. Skin? Whoa! Hello. He's alive. That wasn't expected. I'm in dark. Uh. Okay. Is there ammo here somewhere? Because that would be awfully nice. Yes. Oh, many dudes. Many dudes. Okay, some, something about checking this guy for some reason. Hello? It's happening. It's happening? What are you talking about, Pierce? Look, dude, you gotta give me more information than it's happening. What is it? Was he transforming that I didn't see, or... Is something more nefarious occurring that I have no knowledge of? Let's keep this one bullet, I think. Okay, there's a path over here, but nothing over there that I can see. Yes, it's been a bit, we've uh, started off strong, but the repercussions of our past choices are haunting us quite heavily now. Yeah, as I was going to boot the game, I noticed something my Steam library had. It said I had an achievement. It said the Beast of Darkwater, not beasts, the Beast of Darkwater. And it said kill X villagers or dock workers or whatever. So I'm wondering whether this truth that the Leviathan has revealed to me nice pipe uh, is not the truth per se well kind of is the truth but not the truth that Pierce should be seeing but the truth that the Leviathan wants and the truth that the Leviathan wants is that the Leviathan is freed and its plans come to fruition because that is a truth it may not be the truth and it's not Pierce's truth but it's a truth abandoned whaling station Pierce crossed the docks where old acquaintances and new faces met their ends all over the place Leviathan slaves were wandering in search of a victim after fighting his way through and after discovering the truth about the origin of the cult and its founders Pierce finally reached the whaling station he hopes to catch Sarah Hawkins before she does something bad. I am kind of more worried at, the, at this point about what Pierce could do that is bad for the situation. But, that's why I decided to save that one bullet. Either for Pierce or for Sarah Hawkins. Because one of us is going down. I don't, I don't know who will be the ultimate choice as which one would be better or worse, but we'll find out. Hither thou shall be free. Sarah is with those bastards. I gotta find her quick. That didn't sound good, Pierce. That sounded like you intend to free the Leviathan, which is locked behind that gate. That was in that vision that he had in the... Uh, when he was in the hospital, I think? He had the vision of the Leviathan after the cave-in, and it involved that gate, and that gate being... hit, knocked down, disturbed... something. This tank seems strong enough to break down the door. Um... Yes? Buddy, are you sure that's wise, friendo? I'm not liking what you... I'm not picking up what you're putting down, bro. Seems like a bad plan, my dude. Piercicles. Might not be the best idea, buddy. Because we've made some bad choices so far. And it's possible that they're going to get worse. Okay. Why was there such a convoluted path? 
otherwise. A rope and a hook. Could use that to hold the reservoir back. Relatively thick rope to which a metal hook is attached. It must be used to pick up heavy materials. It looks strong enough to take the weight of the tank. That's why you can go over there. Because you need to attach it to the doodad in order to... Hello, rat. To break the door. To battering ram that stuff. Though Pierce... I really don't want to be the bearer of this news for you, my friend, but it is a bad plan that you are concocting. It's not a good idea to release the Leviathan, but then again, I have already sort of thrown myself to its cause. Alright, what's here? Venata opens the offices. That would be upstairs, one would assume, and I don't have the secret item. Um, where ah Fuller was a crew member too. Interesting. Well, yeah, he you know survived. He's he's they're the same people. Uh, Wednesday, twenty third of June, eighteen forty seven, thirty three north, fifty three west. The morning is biting cold. This creature makes us work hard. Half of my crew is dead. I've never seen such a thing. I do not even know how to describe what happened. It's as if the creature was talking inside our, inside our heads. Some of my, my men went crazy and jumped overboard. This thing is not a whale. It's far bigger. I don't even know how to describe it. It practically gutted our ship with its tentacles. I don't know how my harpoon finally pierced the skull of this monster. The crew is in a sorry state. Fuller looks after the injured, but some will not recover. Ooh, yay. Got the item. That's great. That's that's fantastic. That's that's marvelous. That really is absolutely marvelous. I'm not sure exactly who. Another volume of the Reverend's wife's diary. These are the last entries of the pastor's wife. Her husband ordered his faithful to come together for a final ceremony in honor of the Leviathan. She fears that the pastor will ask them to sacrifice themselves to this abomination. She tried to escape. This is probably why her body was found in a cave under the mansion. So that was the pastor's wife's body. Oh. Interesting. Hello? Looks like a page from a log from 1847. Friday, 5th of June, 1847. 53 north, 53 west. We are starving. The fish seem to have deserted these waters. If I don't quickly find an answer to this crisis, Fitzroy could well set off a mutiny. Each day, more and more men believe in his tales of a miraculous catch. Merciful God, help me. Wednesday, 9th of June, 1847. 57 north, 51 west. We sighted an enormous whale further to the south. The biggest we've ever seen. Fitzroy, Fitzroy keeps telling the men that this is the miraculous catch he promised them. We will catch it and bring it back home to feed our families. Fitzroy setting off a mutiny... Promising a catch when he had when he shouldn't have been promising anything. Hmm. It's Roy, you old dog. Why did you do these things? Did he was he was he the most susceptible? I wonder. Guess we'll find. Here, Sarah. She's humming. That's that's the same type of humming that we we heard in the in uh, at the asylum when we originally went that way. I'll be lucky if it's still sharp enough. The knife is rusty, but still it looks usable. Can I use this in self-defense? Can I get a cultist with it? Doesn't work. Well, yeah, that's kind of obvious, Pierce. It's pretty knackered. It mentions the Leviathan. How it drove the sailors mad. Friday, 27th of June, 1847. 37 North, 63 West. The whole crew has descended into madness. They speak of dreams, visions of a nightmarish city and of a sleeping god. Madness. I lock myself in my cabin. I won't be able to hold out for long. Fitzroy has 12 men on his side. They sacrificed everyone who tried to stop them to their new god. I beseech you, almighty gods, have pity on our souls. 
This will be my last prayer. I can hear them whispering. Good God. Okay. So I attached the rope first. So yeah. I don't recall... Did the article about the miraculous catch mention... All the dead crew members? Because if so... This God. should stop the cart from moving. This should help me get the tank swinging. Okay. Ten forward, good buddy. Now we'll see what damage we can do. I need something to cut the rope to release the tank against the door. Yeah, we've got the knife. This is bad. We're doing exactly what the Leviathan wants, which I suppose we kind of did submit to it. So, anyway. As the vision foretold. What does our diary say, actually? We have two points. What? Five points to level. Spot hidden. Eloquence. Why not? We'll put it in. Oh, oh no, we've got a very good point. There we go. Anything new under traumas? No. Anything new under characters? And no. Uh, no. Ugh. Though interestingly enough, I just realized that the whole thing with Algernon Drake is down here. It says if I decide to explore the occult trail, he will be he will be an excellent guide. I wonder if I took a different path with the occultism, whether he would have had a different role to play because I did just sort of throw everything out of whack by draining my sanity way too early. Using the cost of truth on people may have also um, quickened their own demise. Which is great to think about. All those choice, lovely choices that we make that uh, have... That's breathing. Okay. The Leviathan is definitely here. There's all the glowing goop. I don't know how they got all this, the stone in here. And there's Sarah Hawkins. She's not in her cultist gear, which is weird. What is that thing? Pierce. No. What's that say? Some sort of a band of fish market. I can hear something. Sarah Hawkins, is she here? No. That voice. You're the Leviathan. Yep. We should probably get this over with because one way or another, this is probably the end for Pierce, unfortunately. His sanity is already at zero. So... Sarah? Sure. Why not? Whoa! Did he just get spat on by the Leviathan? Just... It's nice. Oh! Oh! This is, this is... This is great. We're mad now. Totally mad. Hello. Hello? Who is this? The quest for truth requires sacrifice. There's no room for compassion. Who's there? It's yourself. Your stubbornness of wanting to help others who would have deserted you is a weakness. Faith leads us inevitably to solitude, and in one's final moments, one is always alone. You can't escape it forever. It will always find its way. Damn it. Hey, Coltus. Who's banging his head on the door? How about you don't do that? We got a gun or something? Because, you know, cultists. Or not. We're 
somehow alive. Ooh. I'll read that in a second. Let's, uh... Nope. Something there. Well, the sailors were going insane. Fitzroy and the mutineers took over the ship and probably killed the captain. Thursday, 25th of June, 1847. 35 North, 59 West. Fitzroy encouraged the men all day. They are in shock and can't overcome their trauma. They say they can hear the screams of their comrades turned mad. Some of them hurt themselves in a desperate attempt to stop the visions, visions that haunt them. Others chose to embrace them. Fitzroy is one of the latter. He named the beast Leviathan because he believes in his biblical nature. I told him to get rid of it before it's too late. This thing is not the work of God. Well, you're not wrong. You're not wrong, Pierce. Ooh, what's in here? An old log. Captain's log. Uh, Monday, 24th of May, 1847. 42 north, 70 west. We have sailed from the island of dark water towards the north. Sailors say that these waters are haunted. I don't believe in these tales. It's not a good time for us. My men haven't seen the slightest trace of a whale for quite a while. And if this season doesn't improve, they will no longer wish to serve on the Scylla. Sunday, 30th of May, 1847. 47 north, 55 west. <coughs> we are not the only hunters here. While we were looking for prey, we found dead whales. A dozen of them drifting, their entrails exposed. They had been shred, as if they had been attacked by a huge predator. It's very strange. Perhaps it is a sign from God. Perhaps it is this good catch that we have long hoped for. Long hoped for. We must find it, whatever the risk. Belonging to the captain of the Scylla. The pages I found seem to be the missing ones. Excision of the Madness Stone. Beliefs and other superstitions have sometimes contributed to the development of medicine. Several centuries ago, it was thought that a patient with a mental diso disorder had a stone of madness in his skull. A trepanation, trepanation of the skull and excision were thus performed. Sometimes the patient survived, sometimes he was cured. Today, the vocabulary has changed, but the methods a little less. Oh, lovely. Everything points back to the day they brought in that thing. Yep. A forgotten photograph in the offices of the whaling station. Only a handful of the Scylla crew is present. Captain Fitzroy and Dr. Fuller are included. It is dated 1847. Great. Great. That's just great. Yeah, let's see what we can read here. Uh, Leviathan. This fascinating creature possesses incredible regeneration capacities. The, cons the consumption of some parts of its body provokes various effects on humans, depending on the part ingested. Uh, whenever a part of that creature's body is injured or even completely removed, it immediately starts healing. After a few hours to a few days, it is as if nothing has ever happened. The harpoon Hamilton struck in stuck in the beast's brain probably explains why I can't leave. Why it can't leave. It seems paralyzed. It is still conscious, but it cannot activate its defense systems or even move. Defense systems? I managed to extract the cerebrospinal fluid from its brain and its properties are amazing. I have called it... I have called it what? I don't know. Looks like iron hide or iron horde. Uh... Lebion in reference to the gods to the something's ethereal fluid maybe it is gods I still need to make further experiments but it appears that when a subject receives an injection ow uh, injection containing this fluid the their firstborns can control mind? I don't know why only us 13 can do it. Probably because of our long exposure to the beast or our frequent consumption of its flesh making us part leviathan. Two to three times bigger than a common whale. The tentacles are one of the most significant sign that this creature isn't your typical whale. 
their utility is still unknown, but it does remind us of our first visions of the something. God. Uh, consuming the flesh gives a certain form of immortality or at least increases lifespan. It does not bring back youth, however. The flesh is also responsible for the regeneration of the body and can heal almost any kind of injuries, even lost limbs. So he, he injected it in both uh, Pierce and Bradley, because Bradley said he, in that uh, vision of truth, Bradley says that he keeps having recurring dreams of being uh, impaled, which means that what that was a tr that was real, and that he did die, or nearly died, but was injected with the flesh of the Leviathan and brought back to life, well healed, same way that Pierce was, because Pierce's legs were were completely broken; they were gone. He was he was dying. Um, Fitzroy's eyes. Fitzroy's something back in let. Fitzroy's grew back in less than leg. He was he had he was missing a leg. Grew back in less than a week. Surprisingly, he still limps like an amputee. Psychological. Um, warning: abusive use of the regeneration properties might make the body change, um, becoming more similar to the creatures and less human. Ow. Ow. Uh, lighter, please. Thank you. The fat, when boiled, makes the oil. It can be used as a typical whale oil. Its best particu uh, particularity, however, is to... something people to vision... to... that's not cause... allow people to visualize glimpses of this mysterious city and God we saw ourselves. Best effective with creative people having consumed while sleeping also increases increases the effect oh that's just lovely so they've been doing this for a very long time I shouldn't be surprised at all that's all we got all right time to go we'll leave the the actual confrontation with Sarah Hawkins and the Leviathan for the next part so I've been Burkoil and this has been part 23 or 22 22 I'm terrible at this, aren't I? Part 22 of Call of Cthulhu. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't like it. Leave a message. Maybe subscribe. I'm still going on this game and I will be back to it at some point. There's lots more games to play though. So. Thanks for watching. Bye.